Diddy is just a distraction. Something big will happen on November 5th. Thank you for being here today for our press conference on what I describe as the most important issue that's getting the least amount of attention relative to its importance in our country. And like many other issues, we're going to be deciding on November 5 what kind of a country we're going to be. And it applies to this issue as well. President Trump had withdrawn the U.S. from the WHO. And, of course, the Biden administration, like every other disastrous decision they made, reversed those policies when uh, the Biden-Harris administration got in charge. Well, later this week, the U.N. is going to hold a, quote, summit for the future. And they're going to produce, this is right from their website, an intergovernmentally negotiated, action-oriented pact for the future with a chapter on transforming global governance. Ascending beyond the powers being sought by its subordinate agency, the WHO, the UN is seeking even broader and more powerful authority, as you will hear a lot about today. The Biden-Harris administration apparently intends to fully support the surrender and compliance of the U.S. to the UN and these endeavors. They are aligned with, aligned with the international globalists that hate America, that hate the Constitution, that hate our founders, that hate our founding Judeo-Christian principles, and they want America to become like the rest of the world. They don't want us to be subordinate to or governed by our Constitution. No, they want America to be subordinate to and governed by the UN, the World Health Assembly, and the WHO. And in fact, they intend to join with others at the UN summit this week to vote to award additional powers to the UN Secretary General. They seek to facilitate the evolution of the UN from an international cooperative body to an international governing body. These powers would be triggered by any one of a number of so-called global emergencies, whether it was a so-called climate emergency, a health emergency, a cyber emergency, or a gun violence emergency, whatever that's supposed to be, a financial emergency, or whatever they deem appropriate. And the Biden-Harris administration is in full agreement with the UN and the WHO on efforts to place us under their authority and require such things as their international health regulations, including the surveillance of U.S. citizens, the censoring of dissenting views, and much more. The American people didn't vote for this, and they don't support this, and it's up to the people's representatives, that's us gathered here today, to have a responsibility to expose this and to reject this. The U.S. should defund the WHO again. We should withdraw from the WHO. Any agreements with the WHO or the U.N. should require Senate approval or disapproval. And a bipartisan House majority voted to require Senate approval just last week with Tom Tiffany's bill on the House floor. So I'm proud to be joined here by our House colleagues and others who are appropriately concerned and educated, informed, and leading on this issue. Again, this is the most important issue that's getting the least amount of attention relative to its importance and its impact on our country and on the American people. And with that, I yield. One of the trending news stories on the Internet is that of Diddy. Sean John Combs, born November 4, 1969, known by his stage name Diddy, formerly Puff Daddy and P. Diddy, is an American rapper, record producer, and record executive. A three-time Grammy Award winner, he is credited with the discovery and development of artists, including the notorious B.I.G., Mary J. Blige, and Usher. In September, Combs was arrested in a Manhattan hotel and taken into custody. He was charged with three counts of sex... Tra Trump's Project 2025 agenda will give him unchecked political power with no guardrails, and it would take black America... He was charged with three counts of sex trafficking, transportation to engage in prostitution, and racketeering. Reuters reported that prosecutors accused Combs of running a criminal enterprise to facilitate his exploitation of women, dating back at least 16 years. According to the 14-page federal criminal indictment of Combs, the rapper was responsible for coordinating days-long sexual parties, known to the people involved in them as freak-offs while Combs' defense lawyers tried to have him released on a $50 million bond, prosecutors told the judge that Combs was extremely dangerous to the community. He remains in custody pending trial. The news broke on the internet because Diddy has been a role model to many young people, but they never knew the hideous acts he committed while promoting music. 
The entertainment industry is plagued with evil and darkness. Many young people just throw their trust and support for artists they don't truly know behind the scenes. Several of these artists have soiled their hands in evil. They've sold their allegiance to the devil, making it look like they stand for the truth, but right beside them are the deeds of the devil. It is clear that every hideous act by Diddy projects sin and darkness, and it only got to the notice of the public because some victims were brave enough to spill out his secrets. For those still subscribing to worldly music, here's God's word for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 14 and 15 says, But I am not surprised. Even Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder his servants can also do it by pretending to be godly ministers. In the end, they will get every bit of punishment their wicked deeds deserve. You have a responsibility to maintain your state of holiness and the fear of God. Flee from any appearance of sin and darkness. And not get trapped into idolizing people who know nothing about God. In the light of the scriptures and as believers, we know that God condemns every act of sin. He hates anything that pollutes the life of a man. That said, there is a looming plan going on behind the scenes. This evil scheme of men will take the world by storm when it materializes. Diddy's escapades are just a distraction. And to think the whole plan is strategized in a location, which is New York, is also a trick of the devil to make us focus on the minor and forget the major. Take a moment and consider this question. Why now? Why is the world so focused on Diddy's escapades? Is the forthcoming election in the United States of America not worth the focus and prayers? Listen, dear friend, nothing just happens. Everything happens for a reason. And if you're not mindful of what the devil is doing through vile and evil people around the world, you'll be taken unaware. Listening to the short video clip at the beginning of this video, you'll marvel at the revelation of a dark plan by certain people massed under an organization. These set of persons have ruled the world through evil means and agendas. They've projected darkness onto unsuspecting countries and world leaders. And all they aim for is to rule the world through their veto power. If you're conversant with the happenings in the United States and all over the world, you'll discover that certain laws and decisions made by the United Nations, World Health Organization, and some top-class organizations are sponsored by the devil through his human agents. What the U.S. citizens and the world saw as a relief is now the bedrock for evil and darkness. From history, it was recorded that former President Donald Trump withdrew his support and membership from the World Health Organization. And this was due to the hidden atrocities they perpetrated. You may wonder how a renowned institution like the WHO can become a death trap for innocent citizens all over the world. But the Bible did not keep us ignorant, because it says in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 3, Last week, the governor of Louisiana signed into law a requirement that the Ten Commandments be prominently displayed. Chapter 3, verse 3, that its leaders are like roaring lions hunting for their victims, out for everything they can get. Its judges are like ravenous wolves at evening time who by dawn have left no trace of their prey. And in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, we are reminded of the devil's recurrent actions. It says, be careful, watch out for attacks from the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for some victim to devour. This should put everyone on their toes as regards the schemes of the devil. It was said that after Trump's administration, the recent government, headed by President Biden, reinstated several policies that never aligned with truth and justice. America and the world at large have been placed on a time bomb waiting to explode. And this is because there is so much pollution going on behind the scenes. News has it that the United Nations plans to hold a meeting, and according to them, it will produce an intergovernmentally negotiated, action-oriented pact for the future with a chapter for transforming global governance. It is said that the United Nations is seeking a broader level of power. They seek to have absolute power over everyone, high above the government of the United States. Sadly, the United States president and his subordinates are ready to support the surrender and compliance of the United States to the United Nations in its endeavors. They are aligned with the haters of the United States, 
They don't want the people in the country to be governed by certain people and not the constitution. They seek to take power from the hands of the people into the fingertips of a few persons. This is the negative plan of some people. You may think this is a drill, but I tell you it's not. Remember, there is something called the New World Order, a system and a season where a few people rule the affairs of the world from one location. Looking critically into what the United Nations seeks to achieve, you will attest to the fact that the plan to rule the world from one location is already playing out. This message seeks to awaken your mind towards the plans of the devil in the coming months. Note that those who seek to distort the government have an alliance with organizations that hate America and are antagonists to the Christian foundation laid by the founders of the United States of America. What's more, the plan is to make the United States become a slave to the United Nations they seek to make the world unified, but under the bondage and rulership of a few persons. You may never see the real issue with this, unless you trust the Lord for understanding. Many see no problem submitting to one world unified government, but they fail to understand that when that happens, many will die, iniquity will prevail, and man will always want to stand as a god to the world. Here's one of the many atrocities perpetrated by these wicked people. They go ahead to use health or environmental emergencies as bait to control and suppress troubled nations of the world. They use relief materials and financial help as a trap to cage many nations for life, making them subordinates and dependents. One of the evil desires of these wicked men and women is to make the United Nations a general governing body instead of a democratic system. This is indeed a subtle way of empowering a few and making others look like puppets in the sight of the world. Beloved, if you're still wondering what this has to do with you, here's what you should know. When this agenda manifests, America and the world will be ruled by a few. They will showcase their hidden agenda, which is not far from what the devil seeks to achieve on earth. Every plan is drawn from a place of darkness and hatred for Christianity and God himself. On the 5th of November 2024, decisions will be made by citizens of America. This is... My weekends are sacred. So when Sunday scary sneak in, I squash them with Pacific. So many... It's not just the regular election. It's a moment that will be the face of the next season in America and the world at large. For many Christians, this knowledge will help you make the right choice of a president through your votes. There's no point standing for the rulers of darkness and proclaiming the name of the Lord in prayers. In everything you do, you must stand for godliness and your faith in God. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 3 says, When the wicked arrive, contempt, shame, and disgrace are sure to follow. If there is nothing that should motivate you to stand for godliness, this verse should. There is no good thing that the devil or his agents bring to the table. When the wicked come into power, everything that doesn't align with God's plan begins to manifest. You begin to see the works of darkness in all corners of the earth. The United Nations may seem like a powerful organization in the world, but never forget that we serve a God who raises kings and deposes them. All we need to do is subscribe to the tenets of righteousness, justice, and the fear of God. If you sit down and watch the plans of the devil come to pass, here's what Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 says, When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked are in power, they groan. Do you wish to walk in darkness? Do you love to see the world go into turmoil after the election? Certainly not. That's why every Christian is expected to speak up, stand for godliness, and raise a war cry that will expose the plans of the wicked in America and the world at large. Don't keep silent. This message comes to enlighten your mind and make you take a stand against darkness. You may have focused on the trial of Diddy, among other pressing issues on the internet. Today, your eyes of understanding are enlightened. Don't be ignorant of the devices of the devil. When the wicked come into power, there will be no peace in the world. Let this sink into your mind. 
One of the schemes that the United Nations seeks to do is to influence government policies all over the world. They will create negative occurrences that will demand leaders of nations to seek their help, and through that means, they become slaves to the United Nations. These negative happenings can be related to climate, finance, or whatever they wish to do. We're in the end time, and many evil things will happen, and the plan of the current government is one of those evil things. It will be interesting to know that many of the negative occurrences that have happened and will manifest around the world are subtle acts of a few persons in some powerful organizations. It's easy to think that some of the negative occurrences in the health sector are natural, but the truth remains that not all can be termed natural disasters. Some of them are occurrences that could have been managed but because of the evil desires of certain organizations, they allow it to slide so that they turn people into slaves. They don't mind inventing the wrong vaccines and sending them to nations that require them, but to destroy lives. There is certain propaganda as regards wiping the African race from the surface of the earth. Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But I know. I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. One thing is sure, God will reward the wicked for their evil deeds. It may look like they have escaped the wrath of God, but it's closer than they think. When the Bible speaks of the end time and the rise of the Antichrist, it is not far-fetched. Those that will promote the coming of the Antichrist are around us. They are in the church, politics, and every sphere of life. So, don't think too far. The devil's scheme has always been to make men distracted and uncertain of what is happening, and then go behind to promote evil in the world. Remember Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? Driving down the road, and all of a sudden, bang! Oh, bang! There's a crack in our windshield. You know what we can do? Eden? They never understood what the devil sought to do in their midst. They only recognized they had fallen after the devil left. That's the same trick the devil seeks to do today. He wants you to focus on the minor things while he works tirelessly to destroy your life. Jesus declared in Matthew chapter 13 verse 25 saying, But that night as everyone slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat. We will not be silent or ignorant of what the devil seeks to do in America and the rest of the world. The plan of darkness to install evil and witchcraft in the United Nations will not prevail. The name of the Lord in America will not be run down or thrown away like a pack of cards. Jesus will reign, justice will prevail, and righteousness will be seen all over the world. But you have a part to play in all this. Your actions and words as a believer should justify the place of God on earth. If you seek to pray for America and the rest of the world, please do. If your votes will take out the wrong persons from the government, don't hesitate to vote them out. We're in a war, and it is between light and darkness. As we come to the end of this video, I'd like you to join me in saying a prayer for America and the nations of the world. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in this critical moment in America's history, seeking your guidance and protection. As the election approaches, we ask that you grant wisdom to our leaders and citizens so that we may choose leaders who hear your word, live your love, and keep to the ways of your truth. We pray for discernment, that we may see through the veil of deception and choose leaders who will bring us closer to your kingdom. We ask that you protect our nation from the plans of the wicked who seek to overthrow godliness and righteousness. Loving Father, we decree that there will be a great awakening in America, that your people may turn back to you and seek your face. We ask that you bring revival to your church so that we may be a beacon of hope and light in these uncertain times. We pray for the government that truth may prevail. We ask that you expose falsehoods and biased agendas and that your voice may be heard above the noise. Over our nation's leaders, they may seek your wisdom and guidance. We ask that you grant them the courage to stand for truth and righteousness, even in the face of adversity. Dear Lord, we pray for your protection over America, that you may keep us safe from harm and evil. We ask that you bless our nation with peace, prosperity, and your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.